Tonight, I there was a burden on my heart. And as I decided to, to probe in the spirit to find out what the Lord will have for us tonight, I, I didn't know that the Lord had burdened our brother as he led us to the prayers. The burden was so strong if you, if you were following the line of prayers. You realize that there's a call for Christians to be strong in faith. God did not promise us bread and butter. What he promised us is life and eternal life. But the good thing is that as a kingdom citizen, there are things I call bonuses. And unfortunately for us, that is what some of us have our eyes on. The struggle in our faith is not new to us. It's not, we are not the first. You see, if you run away from the battles in this faith, what it means is that you are not ready. For the works of the Lord to be seen in your life. And unfortunately for us, and some of us, I wouldn't say all of us, from where we are coming from, our background, and what we're taught, what we're exposed to, Christianity is defined in a certain way. So, to some of us, uh, prosperity is the, the number one on the chart. Breakthrough. Healing. You can list them. But you see, nobody has been able to sit down, or many of us have not been able to come to the realization of the fact that there is more that God wants to do with our lives than this. So as our brother was leading the prayers, you know, my, my heart was filled with so much joy because if he can be burdened like this to lead us to pray, then what God revealed to me can be revealed to all of us. Where we are going now, we don't need all this kind of noise. You don't need soap. You see, when we say these things, they will say, Pastor has started again. It's not because I, I want to. Unfortunately for us, many of us are still not satisfied with what we are being taught. We still feel that there is something we must do, something else we must do to help God. Hello. I said to you that there's a man I know, when you go to his house, he has red cloth. He has powder, he has soap, he has all the, the tools. But the kind of affliction that he's going through is worse than what he, what he had before. So I began to ask him questions. I said, how, it, this thing, can it help you? He said, we are trusting God. In case you know of any man of God who can help me, let me know. I said, you are still not learning from all these things that you want to still go somewhere. I came to tell you tonight that the reason why God created you was for his own glory. Help me tell your neighbor. God created you for his glory. And you see, everything that comes with creation is good. Everything God created is good even including the devil himself. I want to sound controversial, but I will tell you why. When you read the Bible, you find statements like, God created this and God saw that it was what? Good. And I said, everything God created is what? Good. Even including who? 
the devil. Why the devil? In one of my teachings, I, I, by the help of the Spirit, we were made to understand that if God wants to test a man, he will allow Satan to come and tempt him. So in other words, Satan is useful, true or false? Eh? <laughs> Kill you, you are laughing. <laughs> he will not send an angel to come and do what? To tempt you, but he will send who? He will allow the tempter to do what? Oh, you still don't believe it. Okay, give me Isaiah 54, 54. Let me take you somewhere. Give me Isaiah 54 and give me verse 15. Hmm. Let me show you something. <laughs> Go to 13. Go to 13. I want to find something there. Quickly. 14. All right. Give me MSG. He said, you will be built solid, grounded in righteousness, far from any trouble, nothing to fear, far from terror. It won't even come what? Close. Verse 15. He said, if anyone attacks you, don't for a moment suppose that I send them. And if any should what? Attack. Nothing will do what? come out of it. I'm going somewhere. Continue. Verse 16. He said, I create what? The blacksmith who fires up his forge and makes a weapon designed to do what? To kill. And I also do what? I create who? <laughs> One day somebody asked me a question and I said, I can't answer. He said, why did God create the devil? So if that person is watching me, God is saying he's the one that created him. As to why he created him, I don't know. When you see him, you ask him. But you see, in my study and in meditation, I, I discovered something today. And that is what I want to share with you. In just 20 minutes, I will share with you and you'll be out of here. He said, I also create what? The destroyer. The witches in the family who created them. <laughs> Killian is saying that the way pastor, the way you are going, you want to spoil my party. The way I'm... I'm it is God that created them. So I found out that everything God created is what? Is good. Okay. In the case of Job, the Bible said when the saints got there, the devil was what? He was there. And there was a conversation. God said, have you considered my servant who? Job. You know, because he's the one that created him, he knows him very well. He said, have you considered him? The long and short of that conversation was that, I am going to allow you to afflict him. But because I'm the one that created you, I also forbid you to lay your hand on his life. I'm taking my time to, to build something. If you understand this, there are many of you who are in a state of confusion. You don't understand many things. You don't know why. And you see, that is the reason why you ask questions like, God, why, why have you disappointed me? Why have you forsaken me? Why do you allow this to happen to me? If it doesn't happen to you, who should it happen to? Hello? Hello? Ask your neighbor if it doesn't happen to you. (laughs) 
Who should it happen to? <laughs> Hello. Somebody say, Pastor, I don't like this. Your, your, this is your gospel tonight. It's becoming something. I said, God created you for his glory. This morning, I was speaking to one of our pastors, and I said, if all that you taste is sweet, how do you know that? They, how would you know that? They, okay, how would you know that there's something bitter? How would you know? How would you know? You see, at least when you taste what is bitter, you appreciate that there's something called sweet. True of us. But you don't want you don't want bitter. You don't want to taste it. You don't want to. You don't want to even know how it tastes like. And for that matter, you don't even appreciate what is sweet. That is how some of us, our perception and our understanding about life is. Because if you have ever been afflicted, you appreciate the gift of life. You wake up in the morning and all that you are doing is complaints and complaints and here and there. If you know what affliction is like, you will serve God all the days of your life. You will not be told to pray. You will learn how to pray by force. You will not be taught how to engage God and how to live your spiritual life and take it serious. You will learn it by force. Because you will need to find a way out and the way out will bring glory to his name. Help me tell your neighbor. God knows all that you are going through. So don't give up. You see, the Bible said, he that endures what? To the end. Meaning that there is an expectation of heaven for your life. And God knows that a time will come you will be afflicted. I came to discover that and I want to identify myself with Paul. You see, Paul gloried in his afflictions. Even in his weakness. He said, for when I am weak, then what? I am strong. He went through all kinds of stuff. But because he has knowledge of the fact that everything about my life brings glory to God that created me. And what I want to say to you is that if you read Bible and you have been a student of the Bible, you notice that every one of the chosen that went through, that did not give up, the Lord gave them victory. And that is the reason why it will be an error. In fact, it will be a very big loss if you decide to give up. So I tell people suicide is not an option because God will surely come through. Everything he's doing, he has a master plan for your life. As he told Jeremiah, he said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I did what? I knew. Look at the life of Joseph. Look at the life of David. Check how they began. Look at what they went through. Look at Peter. At some point, an apostle ordained by our Lord Jesus Christ. And says, you are the rock. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The next moment, he found himself in prison. So I am convinced that the master plan of God is perfect, is good. There are some of you, if you have not tasted what we call affliction, you will not take your prayer life serious. You know what I'm talking about. When something is biting you, you know where to go. <laughs> 
I know of a man that I built an altar, and the altar is speaking for him and his family because of affliction. You see, even when he's seated down, he's praying. And the prayers are working. And things are happening. You see, unconsciously, afflictions have drew, <laughs> drawn him closer to God to the extent that he prays as if you have opened a tap. And he's causing problems in the territory, not only in the family. God is using those prayers and the altars that he has built to save many. So you, if you don't know the master plan, you don't have the master plan, what I will suggest to you or humbly tell you is to keep quiet and go through. Like I said here last week, all Christians all over the world are going through something. You are not the only one going through the hard time. So I discovered tonight that everything about us is to bring glory to him. The good the bad and the ugly. Can we put our hands together for the Lord? Now give me Isaiah chapter 49 verse 1 and 3 amplified. Everything. Frida, you see, your story will not be complete. When the story does not capture your dark days and your dark moments. I was listening to Dr. Otabel in one of his videos that is circulating on marriage and he said when I was married I had nothing. How many of you have watched that video? He said, when I was marrying, I had nothing. I didn't even have a chair, not even a mattress. What I had was a bench. Hello? Somebody wants to laugh. <laughs> he said, what I had was a bench. And even when God would help me to upgrade, it was the color of the bench that changed from the original color to white. But today, look at such a man. Look at what God has done in his life. In the midst of all of that, he never gave up on God. Everybody is talking about the glory, but we are not prepared to go through the hard times. My question is that, are we fair to God? Are we fair to God? When you see a man doing well in life, don't be quick. To say things you don't know. You know, in this our part of Africa, when somebody makes it, they say, oh, it's medicine. When somebody makes you say, oh, he went somewhere, oh, he went to do this. That is when, when you were going through the hard times, nobody knew your story. It is only when God has helped you. The nights of prayers, David, the nights of prayers, nobody is seeing it. The sacrifices that you are making, nobody is seeing it. But you see, the good thing is that all of that is to the glory of our God. He said, listen to me, oh, islands and coastlands, and pay attention, you people from far away. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the body of my mother. He has named me. Oh, he has made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand and has kept me hidden and has made me a sharpened what? Arrow. In his quiver, he has hidden me. Oh my God. Verse 3. And the Lord said to me, 
you are my servant Israel in whom I will show my glory help me tell your neighbor the glory of God will be seen in your life the works of Jesus will be seen in your life in the name of Jesus he said you are my servant in whom I will show my glory and I want to humbly suggest to you that the glory of God will not only be seen when everything is okay with your life in fact by my research I discovered that much of his glory will be seen in your dark days your dark moments Can you allow God to manage his own master plan? So that you don't frustrate the agenda and the plan of God for your life. And for your generation. Let it be said of you that once upon a time, a man arose in this family. Against all the odds. Poverty was thinking. So stinking in this family. But you see, he found a way. Against all the odds, despised, maligned, rejected, he found God and stayed at the place of prayer. And by this one man, poverty is rooted out of this family forever. Let it be said of you in the name of Jesus. That the works of Jesus will be seen in your family because of you. That the works of Jehovah will be seen in your territory because of you. Everybody wants to be comfortable. It's not a bad thing. It's good. But you see, your light will shine brighter. As it happened in the land of Egypt. The Bible said there was darkness for days. But you see, the dwelling of the children of God, the Bible said there was light. So much darkness. But the works of God was seen and the glory of God was seen in Goshen. When everybody should be complaining, the people of God never knew that God had a plan. I came to tell you that God has a plan for your life. And that is the reason why giving up in this time and in this season is the biggest mistake ever you will make with your life. Is it money you are looking for? To get rich is not, is not any... Anything special you must do. You see, when you find favor and grace and mercy locates you, you can be rich in a couple of minutes. Somebody say, Pastor, I don't know what I'm, you are talking about. I have seen it before. Just by one connection, one person that comes into your life, that is it. So I've come to the conclusion that me, I don't worry. I don't worry. If you ask my wife, she'll tell you. When there are issues that are troubling people, I have a very, I've told you here before. Sometimes I look for the food I like. If, <laughs> if I have found my own, my own, that's what I'm telling you. We have been praying and praying and praying. So when there is crisis, you see, I don't need to worry myself to go into what? The secret place. Because I've been doing business there. Whether something is happening or not, business is every day or what? Ongoing. So this time around, I want to take it to another level. So that the devil will know that I am not bothered. For those of you who have heard the story that I shared, one day I had an accident. And... 
all the people in the car in front of me got badly wounded. Badly wounded. The mate was off, driver was somewhere. Those days when I used to join bus, you see how God has helped us. <laughs> I want to tell you, if you have been joining bus today, tomorrow God will help you. Even in your time, there's something they call Uber. And see, that's why we thank God every day. We thank God. See, there is nothing that will come our way that will make us behave some way. No. So after the accident, that I realized that I survived in that accident, I came out and I just saw a little scratch on my knee. Then those that survived came out and said, mate, give us our money, or give us our money. I just stood there and said, God, see the way people are there. <laughs> when I was from Achimota to Weja, I didn't board a taxi. I joined Trotro, eh? and I had an accident. But after the accident and I knew what Satan wanted to do, I boarded a taxi. Straight to the West Coast Mall. And I got a plate of rice. And I got, they said there's something they call crasher. And I enjoyed myself. It was in the process of enjoyment that I called, <laughs> I called my wife. I said, I had an accident too. <laughs> I have built my faith to the point that there is nothing that Satan would do that moves me. Because I know that I was created for his glory. Until God is done with you, Satan cannot destroy your life. So at least that is my own way. That is my own way. It is you that will be shaking and be thinking, hey, what is happening? What is going on? Your BP will be going. My BP doesn't go up. No, 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 no. That is how I've trained myself because I know the God I serve. He said, for they that know their God, they shall be what? Strong. And not only will you be strong, you will do what we call what? Exploit. Because I know that in the plan of God, I am involved. I am part of his plan. And for that matter, whatever the devil does will surely come to an end. And God will surely give me victory. So he said, the Lord said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will show my glory. I am so excited tonight to announce to somebody that the glory of God is about to be revealed in your life. The days of affliction has been recognized by heaven and heaven has seen your tears. Heaven has seen your sorrow. Heaven recognized the fact that you have not given up on him and is ready to show forth his glory in your life. That is what true Christianity is. Everybody wants to run away. Where are you going? You see, in an attempt to run away from the troubles, you enter into something else. I know people in an attempt to find solution to their problems, they enter into shrines. And I've said it over and over again. And I will say it again. Regardless of everything you go through, you are better than somebody. know what it means. I had a chat with a pastor this morning as we were chatting. We, see, we spoke of many things. I don't know how your conversations are, but you see, me, my conversations with people, I make sure that my faith is lifted. If that conversation will not lift up my faith, I'm not ready. So you don't come to me and talk about things that may seem to that suggest that it is not possible. Everything is possible. 
especially when God is involved. So we began to talk. We spoke. We were talking. We were talking. And then somebody's marital issue came up. We were talking. We were talking. We were talking. And I said to him, the young man had an issue because his wife did not serve him breakfast on the dining table. Breakfast was served. But the problem for the young man was that breakfast was not served on what? The dining table. And for that matter, it has become an issue in the house. In fact, there is fire in the house because my wife did not serve breakfast on the dining table. <laughs> Can you laugh? Meanwhile, somebody is receiving slaps. <laughs> somebody, is going, somebody is going through something that when you compare the two, you can see that God has really helped this brother. It is you that see the things you go through as problems. But you see, to God, those very things are stepping stones to your glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me John chapter 9 verse 1 to 3. There is an event that took place. And Jesus spoke. John 9, 1 to 3. Give me King James. So Frida, as I was saying, your story will not be complete. There should be once upon a time. Eh? Once upon a time. Recently I chanced on uh, my wife's old picture. One day I will share it. God has helped you. Eh? Some of you, if we if we check your your background, I can confidently tell you that God has helped you. The family that you came from, you don't know what we call mattress. What you know is mat. Yet, you say God has not done anything for you. If you have moved from mat to mattress, it means that you still move higher, true or false? Yes. Life is in what? It's in stages. And you see, at every stage of your life, God teaches you something. And what he teaches you makes you mature. So you don't talk anyhow. You appreciate others. If you have been there before, you appreciate what others are going through so that you can help them. If you have not seen suffering before, when you see a man going through suffering, you will say they are under a curse. Yes, and most of us, we are experts. We are experts. We are experts. And I've seen it. See, people that have not gone through certain things in life, when they see others go through and they are quick, hey, there's a curse upon his life. Who told you? You don't know. Unknowingly to you, yours is on the way coming. His own came in the morning. You don't know that God is waiting for you in the evening. So you are quick. But if you have been there before, you will appreciate it. And you see, the same God that brought you out of that situation, that same God through you can speak into the life of that individual. The Bible said, as Jesus passed by and saw a man which was blind from his bed. Let's move. And his disciples asked him, say, Master, who did sin? This man or his spirit that he was born blind. And Jesus answered, neither had this man sinned nor his spirit 
but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Can I tell you? Your story is so much important to God. If your life is so important to him, your state of life now is so important to him to make a statement to the dying world. I said that situation is so important to him. Every day, that's why we are breaking cases. Case is not breaking. We are breaking for long. One day I went to Apostle and I said, Apostle, there is something about this young man I don't understand. Can you explain to me? Is it a foundation? He said, forget that thing. <laughs> he said, forget that thing. He said, all of us, we have foundation. We have foundation. But you see, we have risen above the limitations in the family. Because we know the God we trust. We know what he can do. We know what he has said. And what he has said is what we believe. If you're ever going to build your faith, then you cannot build bypass the word of God. Yes. What has God said? What he has said is what you believe. So in your present circumstances, regardless of the fact that you have been delayed, you are not seeing what he has said, does not mean that what he has said will not come to pass. So you are quick. You are quick. He said this man has not seen. He is blind. He is blind. Yes. But so that, give me amplified, verse 3. So that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. But it was so. Somebody say it was so. And it is so. <laughs> that the works of God might be displayed and illustrated in him. I need you to understand that you are an example to your generation. God wants to make you an icon. He wants to make you a shining light for your generation, for your family, and for your generations to come. Once upon a time, a man lived. And may you be that example. The one that many devils were cast out of her was the very one that was at the tomb of Jesus when everybody was not around. She had many devils. And that is the reason why I've come to the conclusion that despise no man. Hello? Help me tell your neighbor. Despise no man. For you don't know the tomorrow of that person. You hear things like, I am a class. He's not my class. He's not at my level. What level do you have? If not for the mercy of God, do you have level? And you see, some of these things come our way to humble us. Some of you are proud. And God needs to humble you. You see, and as you are humbled, you see, his works and his glory is revealed in you. If you have not been hungry before, <laughs> one day I had an issue with my wife. I said, ah, Why is it that all these leftovers, you keep them in the deep freezer? That was the problem I had with her. She said, I, I said, I opened the difference. I said, we want to stock new stuff. And then you have all this leftover. Left. <laughs> she said, so you say you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. From where we come from. You see, at least she taught me something. She taught me how to do what? How not to waste because what you don't like, you feel that is not good for you. Somebody is in dying need of it. 
So I appreciated everything that she said. And I said, okay, I've learned something. We learn. In the case of this man, he was blind. And when you read further, you realize that Jesus healed him. And when he was healed, many that knew him could not believe that this man could be healed. What I came to tell you tonight is that God wants to reveal his glory in you. Regardless of your present situation. My brother, the Lord has been speaking to me about you. You see, what I've seen with your life is going to be a huge testimony. Watch it. Because of the many encounters we have had with God, when we see people who are going somewhere, we know, I can know by the way you talk. Everything you complain, everything you complain, everything you complain, everything you have something to say. When God gives you a victory today, you forget the next day, you come back again. God, why are you not doing this for me? Why this? Why that? If he gives you one loaf of bread and you don't appreciate it, how do you expect him to give you something bigger and better? So what I came to do tonight is to add up to what our brother led us to pray to. In fact, most of the scriptures he brought and everything he said, I was in the car, I was telling my wife that, ah, this man will kill us with bed, you know. Christianity is not rosy like that. But the good thing is that after you have suffered a little while, the glory of God, the honor will be seen in you. Can we put our hands together for the Lord? <laughs> Psalm 79 verse 9. So the summons will lead us to pray. Can you strike something for me quickly? My message is precise. Simple. And I want to speak to that one that is afflicted by a kind of disease. God has healed cancer. He has healed HIV. You see, he healed all these, those that did not give up, that held on to him. It doesn't matter the number of years that it took. Oh my God. That you were barren for 12 years and God said, this is the time that my works will be revealed in you. I have one of my brothers. One day I'll bring him here. He's a fan of God. He'll come and share his testimony. For 12 years, 12 years, 12 years, married with no children. 12 years. There is no, no he, he's blessed. He's loaded. He doesn't lack anything. Somebody that collects about $9,000 every month. What can you show him? We are talking about dollars. I'm not talking about CD. It's dollar, please. Don't think it's CD. But you see, even with what he was collecting, one day he will come here. He will come and say his own story. He's in the UK now. With all that he was collecting, he had no child. And his own wife's friends, his wife's friends were just looking at him and said, it is because of the bad life you led when you were on campus. That is why you are buried. That's what they told him. And you see, God led him to leave his job. A job that pays him 9,000 USD. And the Lord said, go on the streets and win souls for me. He left it. Even without a child. He still obeyed God. Left his job. The money he had gathered, bought instruments. A whole set of crusade instruments. Everything he bought. And he began the outreaches. 
in the seventh year, the Lord didn't show up. Eighth year, the Lord didn't show up. Ninth year, the Lord didn't show up. Tenth year, the Lord didn't show up. It was in the twelfth year. How many of you can wait? How many of you can wait? He loves God with everything he has. He did not turn back. He said, if it is God that said, I will give birth to my children in the United Kingdom. It is that same God that I hold on to. And it is that same promise that keeps my faith alive. After 12 years, it has come to pass. He has not lost the faith. But the works of the Lord, the glory of God has been seen in this matter. And now he has you to. You don't know this God. So David prayed a prayer. He said, help us, O God, our salvation for the glory of thy name. Deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. For we know your name is at stake. Help us for your glory. <laughs> There's this song I love. Sing it for me. Glory. Glory. Glory to the Lamb. Glory. 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 Glory to the Lamb. For you are glorious. And worthy to be praised. Rise up on your feet. Upon the throne. Oh, and on to you. We lift our voice to say, You are the Lamb. You are the Lamb. Upon the throne. Let's see glory. Let's see glory. Hey. Glory, 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 glory to the Lamb. We say glory, 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 glory to. Oh, for you are glory. Lift up your voice and sing. Hey, the Lamb upon the throne and on. Now listen. The good thing is that in the midst of it all, you have not been left alone. You see, the life you have today is a sign of the goodness of the Lord to come. He will not keep you alive for us so that you just come and pass through. No. He's keeping you alive for a purpose. I'm looking for that one that is going through the horrible time. Now. That is the one I'm looking for now. To tell you in your face that God is with you. You are not alone. You are the lamb upon the throne. You are the Lamb, you, you are, are the, the Lamb, lamb upon, upon the throne. 
You are the land. You are the land. That's all. Hey, you are the land. That's all. Hey, you are the land upon the throne. Jesus said to the disciples, He said, For my sake, ye shall be persecuted. You see, there are many things that we can put together to explain what you are going through today. You know, when you are in the world, it, it looks as if things are working. The day you decided to give your life to Jesus, he said, come and see, come and see. Come and see. So the psalmist, David prayed a prayer. Give me amplified. He prayed a prayer. He said, help us. Oh God, our salvation. That is your prayer tonight. What you need is grace to see you through. And you see, the grace of God will see you through to victory. Let me amplify. What he will do for you is not only to bring you out of that situation. You see, he wants to tell the devil that there is nothing you can do to this boy, to this guy, to this woman, unless I have given you. He said, help us, oh God, our salvation for the glory of your name. So David knew that my existence, my life, and everything about me is for your glory. He knew. And for that matter, he said, Lord, if I'm going to live for your glory, then you must help me. Help me. Help me to stand. Help me, help me. Help me not to give up. Help me, may I find grace on this mountain. Can you right, right, lift up your voice and pray? The Lord, can I find grace on this mountain? Help me. Help me to live for you. Help me. Help me to see me through. Deliver us, forgive us, and purge away our sins for your name's sake. Let it be your prayer, somebody. Tonight, help me. Help me. Help me. It's only God that can help you, I tell you. You don't submit to any idol. You submit to the God of Israel. And for that matter, the name of the Lord is a stick. He will not allow you to be put to shame. He will not allow you. The devil can do his worst, but the Lord God has a final say. Can you say, Lord, help me? In every situation, in every condition, in every matter, help me, help me, help me, help me, for in the glory of your name. Saya mengubah dia tabaja, raki kaboda, saya mengubah dia. Help us, God. We live for your glory. We live for your glory. We exist for your glory. That your works will be seen in us. In the midst of the troubles, in the midst of the affliction, let your glory and your works be seen. Saya baboria tabedia taba. Rekade pelekade parakade lebaga dapta. Kabel sabeli ataba lia lebaga dapta. Saya bega baria lebaga dapta. 
May we find grace to live for you. May we find grace to sustain us. Your grace, let your grace abound. in the name of Jesus make sure you don't change don't change I was telling my brother this morning I said if you have eat the day you don't have drink water and sleep it doesn't take anything away from you. I discovered that the many hypertension and the pressure that many of us have is because of the things that we don't have. We are thinking, when am I also? The when is in the hands of God. But what I want you to understand is that as long as you are in Him, He will not take away from you. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I will stand with you. I will serve you. I will serve you. In good times. In good times. In bad times. In bad times. In ugly moments. In ugly moments. I will stand with you. I will stand with you. I will serve you. I will serve you. So help me, Lord. So help me, Lord. <laughs> say the Lord. Lord. I am ready. I am ready. To see your glory, to see your glory revealed in me. Revealed in me. So help me. Lord. So help me. Can we put our hands together for the Lord?